Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah with the grace, mercy, love and guidance of Allah Subhanahu wa taala we continue our da'wah work from Khalifa Education Foundation and Post Islamic Psychology Center to train insyaallah over the next 12 10 years 12000 PIP life coaches in Islamic motivation coaching mentoring counseling and our latest book is the heart of love huh? so if you want our PIP book our positive Islamic psychology book the soft copy you can get you have the hard copy free of charge what you need to do is just uh, whatsapp to our handphone number or email to us and we we'll give you a soft copy for your own use huh? please do not publish it also we have the same full book e-book in bahasa Indonesia. Jadi bagi mereka yang mahu buku ini untuk digunakan sebagai rujukan boleh uh, minta buku ini uh, e-booknya percuma. Nanti uh, insyaallah tahun hadapan kami akan uh, buat hard copy di Indonesia nanti ya. Eh. So that is the approach that we're going to do and I've given to you the understanding of why we Muslims must work together with all humanity in this last phase of the 21st century to protect ourselves our family the ummah global society and even the universe from the harm of our own hands allah tells us it is your own hand that have caused destruction in the earth huh? the seas we pollute the land we we destroy and so on so we are now at the last phase of climate disaster if nothing is done within the next 10 years this is ipcc uh, intergovernmental panel for climate change this runaway effect of climate change will destroy all of humanity within the next 200 years wallahu alam so we have to do something go into uh, carbon neutral fossil fuel society that we can do the technology is available it's only the will and to overcome the challenge of the Uh, fossil fuel lobby and their greedy partners huh, that is destroying this earth so we have to do something by planting more trees by having the tree r that means uh, reduce reuse recycle and so on huh, to be a part of to reduce our carbon footprint so i have given you the nature of the islam is a very living caring religion of beauty uh, it's not sectarianism it is a very big vast ocean of love of mercy of compassion of beauty that Allah has given us so we do not make the deen of islam narrow a narrow path that becomes impossible to practice this is where as i say i'm not condemning our salafi brothers or our wahhabis brothers because their question arise why we are condemning no we want them to open their gate of ijtihad to understand this beauty of this deen within the framework of ahli sunnah wal jamaah they are also ahli sunnah wal jamaah but they are only going through one little alley but we have the whole super highway of this deen that can grow and become a wonderful ummah in the 21st and 22nd century that will attract humanity to islam because of the way of beauty the way of love the way of compassion the way of gratitude which is built in into this deen as it was revealed to our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so i've given you some idea about how we have to move this islam heart of love and the religious principles in the previous video I explained to you in terms of the ahkamul sharia relating to the ahkamul fara'iyah islamic law and ahkamul asliyah that is got to do with ilmu tauhid and no kalam logic uh, kalam cosmological understanding of the nature and the science of the divine unity and so on and i have given to you today as we introduce into get greater depth i will teach you some basis of the science of kalam because this is a very powerful and strong argument that is valid that means the kalam cosmological argument is so powerful that even with now the understanding of quantum information theory with the understanding of the cosmological constant the fine tuning of the universe with the understanding of the biological uh, existence of life so many things we can then defend our understanding of the existence of allah the wujud of allah so i will give you many many examples of why our belief system that is based on the belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not atheism not materialism not secularism 
not anoxtism, not panpsychism, but the beautiful deen that was handed to us by our Holy Prophet, our beloved Muhammad sallallahu to his sahabas, his tabi'in, tabi tabi'in, and he was carried through by the great Imam al-Shari, al mutridi Imam al akkani Imam Shafi'i, Imam uh, Hanafi, Imam Maliki, uh, Imam Ghazali especially, where he, he, dis he overcome the challenges of those who are atheists of his time, or those who are panpsychists of his time. So this elm, in terms of Kalam, that is Elmu Tawhid, which I've given to you in the previous video, is very important foundational strength of every single Muslim. So we must aspire to have this higher level of understanding. That means we must have an Imam Mufassil, a detailed belief. No doubt, for Iman, we have to believe in the heart and to declare by the tongue. That means if we believe, uh, we must have in our heart this belief that Allah is existent, Allah is wujud, Allah is our creator, Allah is our Lord, Allah is everlasting, Allah is all the attributive aspects uh, which they have summarized into 13 or uh, 20, whichever the school of uh, Kalam that you are following. But uh, the standard one within the Shafi'i school is 20. Yeah? So I'm going to give you a review of the 20 uh, attributive aspects of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But to go into that, you must have the foundation. So the elucidation of Iman must be the definition to believe in the heart and declare by the tongue. So for all normal people, their Iman al-Mujmal uh, much, much al is general belief. Mujmal is just general. So you have this general belief and at the detailed belief, at the higher level, even at the general belief, they must strive to have some basic detailed belief. Huh? So the very basic of the detailed belief is uh, mentioned, this is in, from my book, a very simplified approach of Al Kalam, the basic principles, uh, No Islam, by my teacher, Maulavi Babu Sahib, uh, which later he, he elucidated in a greater detail the tenets of Islam, uh, where he uh, uh, explained the whole Kalam uh, argument and logic uh, based on Imam al uh, Jawaharatul Tawheed. So, for the general belief is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So if you believe there is no God but Allah, then Muhammad is a messenger of Allah, and you believe it with your heart, and you believe it declared with your tongue, you are a Muslim. That is how big the scope of Islam is. And then at another level, then you must go and have some studies, eh? some detailed belief, at least to understand the nature of our belief system. So our belief system is where uh, Rasulullah sat with Jibril and uh, they sit knee to knee and uh, Rasulullah was asked what is Iman and then Rasulullah explained in detail eh? Amantu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhiri wa qadri khairihi shahrihi min Allah ta'ala wal, bath, wal, af, wal bathi ba'd al maut which means uh, first I believe in Allah then I believe in the angels I believe in the books of Revelation, I believe in the messengers, I believe in the last day and the power of doing good and bad, action emits from Allah, the Qadar and Qadar, Allah the Lofti, and I believe in the reaction after death. So that is a basic understanding, the framework in terms of our al Imanul al mufassal for us to move from here to here. So there are simple common folks who have the fullness Elmu, because the three levels of belief are Iman are first Elmu Yaqeen, then el, uh, this is first Elmu uh, el uh, uh, el uh, Yaqeen, Ainul Yaqeen, and then Hakul Yaqeen. Eh? So the first level is you have knowledge of your belief. The second level is you see Ain, you see with your eyes. The third level you see with the eyes of Hak. So there are three levels. Eh? So the example of this is very important. You may have a simple human being who is just an uneducated laborer who is laboring in the field, but he can have hakul yakin. Why? Because of his constant interaction with nature and his understanding of that everything glorify Allah and he can feel within his inner depth of his heart that he is a believer with the heart that is fully aware of the presence of Allah, so he's close to Allah. So 
That is possible. But naturally, if you want to go to have this hakul yakin, you must have the fullness of the detail of belief, iman al-mufassal plus the understanding of the ilmu tawhid in detail. That is this ilmu kalam, uh, the, the understanding of the uh, kalam cosmological argument. Because this is where this battle was fought over the 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th century onwards, uh, especially during the time of Imam Ghazali in the 6th century onwards, where they, there is a lot of ideas that are in terms of atheism, ideas in terms of panpsychism, in terms of pantheism that is coming into Islam. There are ideas from the Greek logicians. So people are influenced, especially the Mu'tazilite. So this is where we have preserved this deen by understanding it. So what is important is for us, this three level of belief is first ilm yakin we must have that ilm, we must have the knowledge. Then we have the yakin. So it's just like example, if I tell you, you study, I study, say, for a professor, say, Professor Ahmad. He is an expert in uh, forestry. And he says to me, the Amazon forest is now burning. So that you can see the smoke and all that. I have not been to the Amazon. So Professor Ahmad is there. And then he came back and in a conference, he, he tells me, you know, the Amazon is burning, the lung of this earth is burning, and if we do not do anything of correcting this situation, then the whole of the world will be affected by climate disaster, where the temperature is increased, the CO2 level increased, there's no trees to absorb the CO2 and so on. So, that, that level, I believe in him, he, this is Elmu, he has the Elm as an expert in forest, professor, so I believe in him. So my knowledge is like that. So the same thing. At the basic level, we believe what, for example, my teacher teach me. I believe from what he teaches me. So my teacher, Malavi Babu Sahib, he taught me his books. And then I understand it. And I believe him because he's a trustworthy man. And then he gets from his teacher and his teacher. And then they go sanat by sanat until they reach the Awal Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And all this elm is codified within the framework of the Elmu Tawhi. Alright, so that is Elm. But Ainul Yakin is another level. You see with your eyes the glory of Allah. And Ainul Yakin is once you go through Elmu Yakin, you know with the depth of your heart, you see, for example, a butterfly. You don't see a butterfly. Just like this morning, I was just at my garden and I see a beautiful butterfly fluttering near me. And then they're going to the flowers and then they suck the dew, the, the nectar, and then they go around. It's such beauty. At that, you see with your own eyes the glory of Allah. You see with your own eyes the eye of the creation, the beauty of this creation. Where does it, all this come from? It must come from, from the grace, the mercy, the love, the creation, the commandment of kun fayakun from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you begin to see that. That's the second level of belief. The third level is experiential. This is part experiential. The highest level, hakkul yakin. That in your heart, there is always the presence of Allah. Because Allah tells us in the Quran, He is even closer to us than our jagra vein. And Allah tells us in the Quran of our reliance on Allah, where He tells us, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ ibadi anni fa inni kareeb ujibu da'wati da'i iza da'ani فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِلَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So, when they ask you about me, tell me I'm close to them, I'm near to them. Let them then Ask me, pray to me, and I'll respond to them. Huh? Because, and then you will be rightly guided. So, at this level, Hakul Yakin, you have the fullness of the understanding of the revelation, the understanding of the presence of Allah that is ever with you. And when you realize that, that is the highest level of Iman. Okay? So, everybody must strive to this. Alright? And this is not something that you cannot strive for. It's not like, okay, it is only for a few. No doubt, a few people will reach the, this highest level of understanding and living within the presence of Allah all the time. But if we can just have a taste of it, a little taste of it, Alhamdulillah, it is such a wonderful understanding and our Iman will grow and our reliance on Allah will grow that we have no fear and no worry uh, because Allah tells us, 
when you have the fullness of iman, la khawfun wa lahum yahzanun. You have the reliance of Allah, la khawfun wa lahum yahzanun. You have no grief, no, no fear of the future. And with that, you can then fulfill your life as a, the fullness of iman, Islam, and Islam, iman, and Islam, and the fullness of being the Caliph of Allah, always striving to make yourself good, help others to be good, and make the world good, inshallah.